Hello and welcome to my second one of these videos. Uh, eventually I will probably commission, if, if these continue, I will try to commission a actual title card for it. But in the meantime, this is the second one of my test cases for trying to come up with an idea on how to take unusual concepts for a character and stat them. Uh, I'm Now in a lot of these cases, and this is one of them, the method I'm going to be using isn't the most efficient, and what I would do is work with the GM to homebrew something. But I am, for the purpose of these videos, avoiding homebrew. Um, in a lot of cases, that, that's going to be producing some inefficiency. Um, but again, the point of this is to do it completely within homebrew. Okay, test case number two is a character I played in 3rd edition, we're going to be doing it in 5th edition, and until somebody asked me specifically how do I make X character in Champions or some other system, I am probably going to be focusing on D&D because it is the most restrictive and requires the most unthinking of things to do unusual concepts. Okay, so Jaseel Crackstone, Were Rat Rogue Paladin, this is a character I came up with after one too many encounters with people who did Paladins absolutely wrong stereotypical Dudley do right follow this code to the letter and I'm not talking about the paladin code I'm talking about this this uh, sacred cow list of things a paladin should and should not do that has nothing to do with what the actual concept of a paladin is so I came up with a paladin that followed all of the requirements of being a paladin and followed the paladin code to, as completely as possible but I abandoned all the stereotypical stuff that people had built up around the Paladins that made them so annoying. Um, I played this character for almost a year in a play-by-post game, and the other players thought she was a human rogue. I never broke the Paladin code. I never lied. I never claimed I was anything. I never. No one ever asked if she was a were rat. No one ever asked if she was a Paladin. But I went through almost a year without revealing that she was anything other than a, a, a human rogue. Now the actual were-rat is a monster and it's not suitable for player character for a number of different reasons. In third edition you could play one by taking effective combat levels but ECL characters were largely less effective. That was a trap I would say. Largely less effective than a normal character so I avoided that. I used the Hingyokai which is a race from Oriental Adventures back in 1st and 2nd edition, which they had a small animal form and a humanoid animal form and a human form. So it fit fairly well for a were-rat. It wouldn't work as well for other were-creatures, but it worked really well for a were-rat. The Hingyokai has not been officially reproduced in 5th edition yet. I would use a it if, if it had been, but instead we're going to be using the shifter from the Eberron Unearthed Arcana thing. The shifter's characteristics we're going to get into in a moment here. Um, it is the close. It is basically a was built for people who wanted to play were creatures, but the GMs wouldn't want to give them the full power of a were creature. They have dexterity plus one, and to be honest, me and a couple of other people think the shifters are underpowered compared to a lot of races. They have dark vision, sixty feet. Um, they have shifting. They use it once per rest. This is either short or long rest. They get it back. It gives them one minute duration. It takes a bonus action to do. They get temporary hit points and some other benefits. Their sub races are the first one, the Beast High, which is plus one constitution and plus one armor class while they are shifting. And they never get more than that one use per day, which is one of the reasons why we think it's less powerful than other classes like, say, humans. Cliff Walk, plus one dex, and they get a climb speed of 30 while shifting. That's the one I'm probably going to, I would go with for just sale, just because of the rats and the climbing thing. That That's probably the one I'd be going for. The next one is long stride, which is plus one dex and dash as a bonus while shifting, which she will get as a rogue anyway, so no. Um, the long stride will not be one, would not be one she would pick. The beast tide is not really tempting either because it's not the right concept for a rat. The long tooth is plus one strength. And a bite attack is a bonus while shifting. That's really very much wolf background. And it's one of the original two shifter sub races. The second of the original two shifter sub races is the Razor Claw. Where as a bonus attack, bonus action in combat, they can use an unarmed attack that does slashing damage. It still only does 1d4 though. And again, these are 
both the bite attack and the unarmed attack sound nasty, but they're really kind of under under uh, effective compared to other bracial bonuses. The wild hunt gives plus one wisdom and advantage on wisdom checks and saves while shifting, and that's pretty nice, except for you only get shifting one minute per day, or one minute per rest, I should say. Now we're going with the cliff to walk shifter for the reasons I said. It's very much like the rat. Now the problem is this thing doesn't give you a straight rat form. Now we're going to focus on class combos. One of these is very easy. The Paladin. She is a hunter of undead. That is her focus. She is a Van Hel it's like the Van Helsing style undead stalker. That is her job. So she's a Vengeance Paladin. Uh, now Rogue is a little bit more difficult. Now Thief, we've got to go focus on what her skill set is. And Thief kind of fits, and this is probably one I would probably take. Assassin is good because, again, it goes to the hunter aspect. Except it has that infiltration stuff. It doesn't really need it. Now, a mastermind is very was very tempting, but it focuses mostly on helping other people, and she's more of a lone hunter type. Swashbuckler is where I eventually was going for because it's very flashy and involves dealing with a lot of her attitude on the way she approaches things. She is very much a swashbucklery type rogue. Now, on the matter of the rat form. We can't solve that without doing home brewing in the matter in races, but we do have a solution for it in classes. And it's going to create a little bit of inefficiency. The druid class. If you get to the second level druid, you get wild wild shape. And you pick the moon circle druid because you're not getting in druid for anything but the wild shape, and you're not going to get any more than two levels. So moon circle. You're not going to even get all the benefits out of the Moon Circle because all you're going to use the Wild Shape for is to do uh, Rat Form or Giant Rat Form, which means you're really, really underusing those two Druid levels. But this is a way to do this character completely within what is officially released rules in the game system right now. Again, I, as I said right from the beginning, this is a character concept that might really what I would do is I would get with the GM to come up with a homebrew solution for some of the points of uh, inefficiency you have. There really is nothing, no way around the inefficiency you get when you multi-class between rogue between two classes. Um, and actually, the way multi-classing works in fifth edition handles a lot of that very beautifully. You won't get to some of the higher level stuff. But a lot of the higher level, 18, anything 15th level on up, is very much candy. It's not all that necessary to a class, to a character concept. Anything you get higher than 12th level or higher than 15th, 15th or 12th level, even stuff, a lot of stuff you get higher than 10th level, is not inherently necessary to, some, to every concept. Some concepts, it is very key, like... Um, one of the monks, the monk in uh, in my um, Princes of the Apocalypse game, is, the player is really amused by how much like a Saiyan, the Sun Soul Monk class uh, path gets. And she really wants to get to the 17th level so she can use what we have been affectionately referring to as going Super Saiyan, where the Sun Soul Monk, monk starts glowing and, and such like that. But, uh, so that 17th level is key to the concept. But for um, Jaseil, she's the upper level stuff for Paladin and Rogue is never really her main focus. It's that she is a investigator. She's kind of cunning. And she used a lot of objects and holy water and stuff like that. She rarely did blatant spell casting herself. She tried to keep it all on the down low. She made it look like she was using items. Never outright lied, just kind of set it up so nobody asked her a question. And when she did lay on hands, she had some uh, smelly ointment she used while she was doing lay on hands to make people think she was using a ma magic item. She didn't tell them the ointment did nothing. They didn't ask if the ointment did nothing. Nobody asked her what the ointment did. She just, so she would uh, use the, the lay on hands and rub the ointment in and so on. But, um, so the higher level stuff, the 10th level plus stuff, where you start getting more spectacular things on both Rogue and Paladin weren't really necessary to her character type. So the inefficiency, the loss of abilities, you, the slow, the slowdown on reaching higher level abilities 
as either rogue or paladin you get from multi-classing is unavoidable but fine it doesn't make you less effective as a character especially not in fifth edition where a lot of powers improve on your character level rather than on your class level the only thing that she would probably have problems with is the uh, uh, ability score improvements so she would likely I would likely end up choosing one class to go 12th level and one class to go 8th level so that she ends up getting all five ability score improvements. But that's about it. Um, so that's how I would do this character. Barring working a uh, homebrew situa solution, um, this is how I would do this character. Thank you, and I hope to have another one of these coming up pretty soon.